Well, Chuck Holton joins me now live from Chicago. Chuck, you really have to feel for those people in that community that are under siege, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very happy and encouraged to see uh, that they're being proactive about protecting themselves. Yeah, they really are, Grant. I'm standing here in front of City Hall, downtown Chicago, and you spend a lot of time down here. You know that this area is well-to-do, it's beautiful, it's well-kept, uh, and, you know, well-policed. But only about four miles south of here is that neighborhood I drove through yesterday. And I'll tell you, I was driving around that neighborhood for several hours uh, listening to the police scanner, and it was just shooting after shooting, uh, blackmail with a firearm, uh, assaults, I mean, just nonstop. And you could just sit on the main thoroughfares and watch police cars zooming one way and the other with their lights and sirens running because that place is without a doubt a war zone. It's just incredible the the contrast between that place and right here where Mayor Emanuel's office is. So, Chuck, let me ask you, I, I had urged Mayor Emanuel to show up and hear Rhonda Ezel speak at the Greater Rock Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, clearly, he didn't show, did he? No, oh, he wasn't there. Um, it was interesting, the people who were there, how many of them uh, talked about that the, the laws, the gun laws in Chicago made them, turned them from law-abiding people into criminals uh, and not, you know, unwittingly because many of them have guns that were passed down to them or, or whatever. I, actually, most of them I spoke to, even the, the old women, uh, they say, yeah, I got a gun in my closet. And, and I know it's illegal, but I'm not going to turn that thing in because that's the only thing I have to, to try to keep myself safe. And, you know, Rhonda Ezell is doing a great job in fighting City Hall. She's won two landmark cases against the city of Chicago to uh, allow them to get a gun range in the city so that they don't have to go outside the city to go and train, which for some of those people would be prohibitive. But you know, there still is not a gun range in the city. Uh, and that's uh, at least not one open to the public. Uh, so they've won the they won the battle, but they're still fighting the war. All right. So the other uh, part of information I took away from your piece was that they've taken security into their mm -hmm. own hands there there, and, and that they are actively trying to make sure that the criminals don't show up in the church, which there is a history of, of happening in, in Chicago. Yeah. You and I have friends that actually go into churches and help churches do this very thing. Uh, again, another refreshing piece of information to see that the Greater Rock Missionary mm -hmm. Baptist Church is doing that. That's right. Uh, you know, I, I talked to the pastor of that church. I went to the service there yesterday morning, and uh, they said, I, I, I told him, hey, you know, if you go to City Hall, there's big signs all over the place that say no guns allowed inside. How come I don't see one of those on the door of your church? And he said, because that's stupid, because that just, that just advertises for people to come in and rob us. And they have had problems with that. The, the criminals will wait until the offering has been taken up, and then they'll come in and, and literally, you know, uh, rob the church. But uh, these guys have a, a plan. They train according to that plan, and they, uh, they lock the, the doors of the church as they're taking the offering until the offering is secured, and then they open the doors back up. So if you show up late for church, you might have to stand outside for a while and wait until the offering has been taken up. Yeah.